Um, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Sarah and I am a knitter and sewer and general mess maker crafter. Um, I live here on the Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation in Melbourne, Australia, and I would like to start making a podcast. Um, I, yeah, I don't know, I feel like I've been sitting on it for like, I've been thinking about it for a while because I love watching knitting podcasts. Um, and the sun was shining today, my hair's clean, I'm feeling good, the time is now. Um, I think I wanted to, yeah, I think just have somewhere where I can talk more about knitting than I normally do, which is still quite a lot. Um, but I suppose the other thing that I am conscious of and why I think the world needs yet another white lady knitting podcast is um, I live in the Southern Hemisphere and obviously it's the middle of summer right now. It's really beautiful and sunny and I love watching all the knitting podcasts that come out of the Northern Hemisphere, but obviously it's really unbalanced in terms of like it's midwinter. They're knitting all these like gorgeous cozy knits and I'm sitting here sweating a little bit. But anyway, it was mainly just to like balance things out a bit, show a different kind of end of the seasonal spectrum. And yeah, I do quite a bit of sewing, quite a bit of knitting, and I wanted to show you a bit of both. Um, but we'll see how we go. Um, I will start by showing one of my very few summer appropriate knits, mainly because <sighs> Melbourne isn't even that hot, but I feel like it's hot enough that it hard to wear knitted things on a daily basis. I feel like I listen to, you know, people from the UK talking about wearing like a merino cotton blend in summer and I just die at the thought. But anyway, this is my simple bralette by Naked Knits. Um, I've knitted it in Rowan Cotton Glace. It was mainly just to use up some cotton that I had left over from quite a few years ago, actually. Um, it used about two and a half balls. Um, I like it. It probably doesn't get a huge amount of wear mainly because it's pretty, like it's still heavy and thick and even, yeah, even though it's pretty dry in Melbourne. It, yeah, I think the one thing that I don't love about it is that, I mean, I can wear this without a bra, but I kind of just prefer to wear bras normally. The straps sit quite narrow and I would love it if they were a little bit more out, like a little bit here. Um, and I think probably the best way to achieve that would be to continue these increases out or decreases in. I can't remember which, but it would mean a deeper V, but I think that's probably going to be the best way to move this out. But that's something I will probably try and do for future iterations of this pattern. But overall, I really loved it. Um, I think the thing I loved about it most was that it was a Excel spreadsheet like plumb in your numbers, your measurements and things, and it will tell you sort of how much to cast on for different sections. And like the nerdy part of me just mm, was so satisfied at the prospect of like, um, like the knowledge that there's this like maths that's underpinning knitting and it's gonna help you like get really well fitted garments and someone else has done all the like heavy lifting to create these formulas to make a really well fit, rid, fitted top. And overall, I think, they nailed it in terms of like that spreadsheet. I've made it a little bit longer in the body um, and added a bit more ribbing. And then I just chucked some eyelets in as well, um, just to sort of make it more of a cropped top and less of a bralette. Um, it's something that I'm keen to make again, mainly so I can, yeah, get, I like it as a, I like the idea of it as a layering piece and just like, maybe something in like a lovely merino for winter to keep close to the body, I think is a good prospect. So yeah, something I'll definitely work on more, maybe once it gets a bit cooler. But anyway, this is my summer cotton top. Um, I, yeah, I guess I wanted to, I think the other reason I really wanted to make this podcast now 
is because I had some pretty all consuming exams that were in the end of January. And now that I've kind of like re-emerged and doing normal things again, it was a good chance to like start doing all the normal, like you can just knit again, which is really nice. I can just talk to people um, who are not my study group, which is nice. My study group is lovely, but um, just do normal things. And so I've kind of been quite productive with my knitting, which is nice. Lots of things are nice, apparently. Um, but yeah, so I think this was like a good time for me to kind of celebrate all the new cast-ons and things, thinking about hopefully getting started on some woollier, warmer, cosier vibes down the track. But yeah, feeling good. So I think, look, and the other, the most time sensitive thing is that I'm going to a baby shower this afternoon and I wanted to show what I have made before I give this away. Um, so this is a, this is a seaside sweater as part of the seaside set by Petite Knit. Um, my friend doesn't know if she's having a boy or a girl. So I went with a sort of a safe red gender neutral. Um, and I think I made, it's going to be born in April. And so I wanted it to be kind of useful over the cooler months, like May, June, July. So I think I made like a three to six month size. Um, or maybe like, a, I think there's a three month size. It'll be in my Ravelry. Um, and it's knitted in this four ply, which you can get online. I think it's called Adorn Silky Cash Merino, um, which is like lovely and soft. It's pretty old. And I think there's not really much of it being made anymore, but it's just a lovely baby appropriate four ply. Um, and then I think my favorite bit is these little buttons. Um, I actually accidentally forgot to count the button placement, sorry, the button hole placement, um, because it was like throw in a button loop every, or a button hole every so many rows, in addition to all of the other shaping. And actually it was quite a complicated, like for such a small garment, like working this area was like, there was a lot going on. Um, and so the button at the bottom is not sewn in, like it's just fixed, you can't undo it, but it's basically at the opening anyway. Um, but yeah, I love it. I hopefully it is not just decorative. Like I hope there's, I hope she can get use out of it. I think that's my main concern with making things for people who have babies. Having not had children myself, I don't know what's like practical and what's just like ornamental and awkward. So hopefully this is, oh, I have the bundle, I have the bed. So this is Silky Merino 4 Ply, which is 90% uh, super fine merino wool and 10% silk. It's from a brand called Adorn Yarns, which isn't spinning anymore. Like they're not making yarn anymore, but you can still get it online, but it's fine. It's it's nice. I don't know. It's just a plain full ply, um, which is machine washable. So good for babies. Um, the other thing that I made, which is another baby present for another... And this is for my niece, who is currently like about six months old, but I've kind of made this as a kind of two for one, like wanting to use this yarn because I've had it in stash for a while um, and for her because she's very cute. Um, but I think I made, so this is the dandelion dress, which is also by Petite Knit because mm, the lady makes good baby patterns. Um, I made this in Rowan Cotton Glace as well. I don't know, I just, it was a few years ago, I just went through this massive phase and I bought a truckload of Rowan Cotton Glace, which is fine, but I kind of, in hindsight, was not a great life choice. Anyway, um, this is the dandelion dress and it's very cute. I love these little dandelion um, sort of stitch things, which are great as a, it's actually an increase. So it's a way of, kind of creating increases to get the flair in the dress, but also looking really lovely as a decorative piece. So I put a little um, button from my grandma's stash on the back as well. So I think that'd be nice to pass on more intergenerational knit items and knit accessories. 
Um, but yes, I ran out of yarn, so I actually ended up doing the facing for the bottom of the skirt in <laughs> leftover cotton glaze, um, and actually quite like the way it looks. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think I did the one to two year old size. So she won't be ready for it for a little while, but mm, once she is, I think it'll be cute. The Rowan Cotton Glace is quite stiff and this is a bit heavy and in hindsight might not have been the best choice for this dress and it would probably do better in something, I don't know, something a bit lighter. And I guess that reflects the fact that Rowan Cotton Glace is a is closer to a sport weight and I think in some projects I've kind of used it as I would a like an eight ply. Um, rather than a four ply which is what the pattern is intended for which is probably why it's turned out even bigger than it was intended but anyway it'll still look good she'll fit it eventually like just give it time that's the thing i like about kids things i feel like you give it to them they'll get there eventually the bigger you make it the longer it'll last um and the other thing i have finished recently is something for myself which is socks I I have never been like super into socks. Don't know, just like not on the sock train until now. I don't know, I've just had a real renaissance. I've made some in the past, but like, eh. Had a real renaissance with these. They were actually to use up um, some yarn that I had bought initially to make some gloves, some four ply fingerless gloves for one of my uh, supervisors at my old job um, who sort of um, gave me a lot of his time and really taught me a lot and really helped um, as I'm kind of going through my training for work. Um, so I made him some gloves and there was so much left over because obviously it was like a hundred gram skein of this hand dyed yarn that I had enough to make socks with the remainder. They're just vanilla socks. I kind of wanted to use up as much as I can hood so I used I went toe up um and yeah I've used so the the main body yarn is from a hand dyer in uh somewhere in I think eastern Australia um called Ren and Ollie very beautiful it's just sort of a standard sock base with some nylon in it um but I think it's called like green sleeves or something or ever, evergreen it's called evergreen but it's pretty subtle. I feel like the camera is even making it more, more variegated than it truly is or how it appears. Um, and then the, the contrast is in a Ren and Ollie sock mini, which was called Vanilla Chai, which again, I just didn't want something, wanted something with like a little bit of fun in it, but overall just wanted a low key pair of socks to use up yarn. So I feel like these socks are free, so that's nice. Um, I've worn them once. I wore them to work in this fit of like excitement about getting them finished. And then like, it didn't occur to me that I am on my feet a lot of the day. And I usually wear these kind of like wool runners to work, which are really good for being able to throw in the wash, but wool socks plus wool runners, like up and down on my feet a lot of the day meant that I was like, it was too hot, um, which is a nice problem to have. Like, oh, my toes are too, too cozy, but um yeah February was probably not a great time to choose wool on wool um but they held up they're lovely my only concern with them is not concern um because they're toe up which I know this is why everyone talks about they don't like toe up socks um is because of the cuff and how stretched out the cuff is um which I knew was going to be the case but that was the life I chose when I chose to do a toe up sock so I could make sure because I wasn't sure how much yarn it was going to take. Turns out it was obviously heaps um, left over. But they're pretty stretched out after one wear. Um, I've recently cast on another pair of socks. <laughs> what a segue. And because I bought this whole I bought a skein of this yarn exclusively for the purpose of doing these socks I'm fairly confident I'll have heaps so I'm like I'll do cuff down and just enjoy that and I did a 
uh, gem and twisted cast on, um, which is known for its elastic qualities. And mm, I am impressed. So yeah, look, it's a it's a very it's a far cry from where I'd want this one to be. Um, I'm thinking if I can ever be bothered, maybe depending on how much this annoys me, I might unpick the cuff rip it back, knit a top down cuff and see if I can kind of graft it or like Kitchener stitch them to Kitchener stitch it together at this point. I've never done that before. It could be a mess. If it doesn't work, I'll just have to redo it, which brings me to the exact same position I am now. So potentially. Or I might never get around to it in the interest of making new things instead, which is also a very real prospect. So we'll see. But I love those socks. I'm just, yeah, I feel like they've really sparked something for me. And I'm kind of on a bit of a like, ooh, maybe I'll try and do like a pair of socks a month, depending on how I go. Mainly I've knitted two pairs of socks in the first two months of the year. So I've, I might as well keep going. I'll see. I'm not gonna hold myself to it. I'm not gonna get stressed by it, but potential um, but I have cast on my third pair of socks for the year so my March socks I'll call them now um, this yarn I feel like I've, I've caked it up so it's harder to appreciate it but mm, it is lovely it's it's like very soft it's got lots of like yellows and browns it's giving me like very strong like Weasley vibes but then it's got a little bits of black in it as well which kind of um, this is from Hodgepodge Skeins. Um, it's a four ply sock yarn, 75% uh, merino, 25% nylon, and this is the color sandstone. And I'm knitting the Hermione's homecoming socks, I think they're called. Hermione's everyday socks. Um, and I really, I really like this pattern. You've got to watch it a little bit more in that you can't just like knit and knit and knit and knit, but obviously that's what you get when you don't use a vanilla soft pattern. So uh, yes, anyway. Um, but yes, it makes a really cute little, no, you're not gonna even be able to see it here, but it's, it's essentially like a rib, no, like a moss stitch, but a little bit more blown out and a bit more spread out. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And so far I'm enjoying it a lot. So yes, these are my March socks. I like calling them those. These are my March socks and yeah. I like this as a good travel project, which obviously is why socks are, I think this is the, the, the good thing of socks is that like, I can just like chuck them in here and this can just go in any bag. And I've always got a project, which I know I'm not gonna need to like worry about focusing on it too much in terms of specifics. One other work in progress at the moment. Wow, we really jumped back and forth there. Anyway, my other work in progress at the moment is um, just some penny gloves. I am trying to use up my stash a bit this year, which is ridiculous because I just bought a truckload of new yarn. But my goal is I've got lots of like single balls that I kind of buy and I'm like, oh, that's cute. Um, with no like intention. Um, no intended purpose. So I'm trying to be a little bit more like when I buy a yarn, it's for a specific purpose and not just because it's nice. I would make an exception for like a skein of sock yarn because that's, whilst it's not got a specific purpose at the time that I buy it, I think it's fairly evident what it will become. So it doesn't matter. But I'm just knitting some penny gloves with this ball of 100% alpaca yarn, which is an eight ply. Um, it's from Morris and Sons, which is like, fairly large commercially type knitting store um, that has one in Melbourne and one in Sydney. Um, but this is their 100% baby alpaca uh, Maya eight ply, um, which is really beautiful and soft. Um, makes for a really nice, it's a really nice yarn actually. And it's reasonably cheap because it's their sort of in-house, not too bad. Um, this is giving me very like handmade by Florence handmade by Florence Vibes, this yarn, this colour. Um, but I think I'm just going to make these for my mum. 
Um, I think she'd like them a lot. And they just feel really nice because it's like 100% alpaca. I don't know how they'll hold up. Um, we'll wait and see. But the thing I like about this is I have made these before and I worked out I can get a pair out of 150 gram ball. It means they're a little bit shorter um, in the wrist than the pattern, but if it means I can use up a single ball of yarn and make something cute, it works. So I feel like I'm really pleased with this pattern and it's a good one. Obviously the penny gloves are like good to give as presents, but I know that I can get a really, a nice ball, nice 50 gram ball, get a pair out. Um, because it's an eight ply, I, I don't know, rather than, I'm not quite sure what the pattern actually recommended, but I ended up, I use 3.25s and I think I do the thumb increases a little differently as a result because I'm knitting it a bit looser with a sort of a slightly chunkier yarn combo or single yarn. So um, I'll have, I put, I put a few notes on my Ravelry. Obviously it's a paid pattern, even though it's quite simple. So I don't want to be too explicit, but yeah, I just kind of, now that I've worked out, I think this is going to be my go-to like smash out a pair. They obviously knit up so quick, even quicker because this one's a bit thicker and I love it. And then my last thing that I wanted to show was my like current big project, which is this. This is going to be a tulip sweater um, by Melody Hoffman. Um, it's coming along. It's really lovely. And you can tell that this is my like, mm, I am ready for some autumn vibes. It's, I've done one sleeve. I did one sleeve first just to get a sense of what's going on. Um, and now I'm working on the body and I've still got this sleeve to work on. I've made it using one strand of the Isaiah mohair in this really lovely warm brown color, which just, it's just so lovely. I love it so much. Um, and what I particularly love about it is that it really, this is the other yarn I'm using. And I feel like this alone is, it's not a great brown, it's fine, but I feel like this really pulls it and makes it a beautiful, rich, warm color. Um, so yeah, I love it. I'm very, I'm really excited to wear this and I've sort of tried it on and I'm really happy with the fit around the body. This yarn is Rowan felted tweed, but I've dyed it. So it started out as this like weird greeny gray cream color, which I really wanted to be a nice cream and it wasn't. And I kind of ignored that at first. I'll be back. All right, something of an intermission. I didn't realize how much I was like prattling on. And um, my mum showed up and we had to go to the baby shower that I went to. So that was lovely. And now I am full of scones and tea and nice things. Um, and look, this was an unanticipated like opportunity for a two for one, what am I wearing? Um, but here we are. This is, um, I feel like my most like high tea appropriate dress. Um, it's one that I kind of semi self drafted, very heavily inspired by guidance from um, the closet historian on YouTube who makes like the most incredible videos and she's just so cool. And anyway, she helped guide me draft this sort of all in one bodice. It's kind of hard to tell, but sort of a classic fit and flare, big skirt. Notably, it used to be a tablecloth. I bought this um, at an op shop in country Victoria where I was working last year. And it was, um, yeah, started life as a tea towel. I mean, as a tablecloth. And now it's one of my favorite dresses. Um, feels really ladylike and classy, um, but the fabric is, yeah, it's had a long life, but I'm glad that I've got to give it a second life. Um, but yeah, 
I was in the middle of talking about this. Um, so yeah, I was saying that this is my tulip sweater using one strand of um, Rowan felted tweed DK, which is like, it's a thin DK at the best of times. Um, when you pull, like when you frog something and rewind the yarn, I feel like it gets even more sort of tortured and thins out a little bit. So this yarn has had a hard life and I hope that this is its last iteration. Um, but anyway, this is lovely and cozy and I just need it to get cool enough for me to wear it once I finish it. My only concern with it, and actually the only thing that's making me hesitate is when I did this sleeve, I, I kind of just steam blocked it to get a sense of how to look after it, like with blocking and it grew in length a lot. Like the gauge is quite loose anyway, just by nature of the fact that it's two thin yarns, like a thin DK on a five and a half mil needle, which is exactly what I need because any thicker and it's not gonna have as much utility as a jumper because it's gonna be too warm. Um, but I don't know if it's like, you know, the, the looseness of the gauge and the fact that I think I overshot on the sleeve a bit anyway, just meant the sleeve is really long. And I mean, I have like disproportionately long arms, which is why I like knitting because I can get them nice and long, but like this grew a lot, which is fine because I can easily rip this back a little bit and redo the cuff. My concern is what implications that has for the bodice. Um, Cause I'd like to have this hit maybe like the bottom of the scallops, 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 to be like around my hip. So yeah, I'm not sure. I think I might try and like put it on some barber cord and maybe kind of block it to see where it sits to try and anticipate that stretching out before I commit to like doing all of those rib, all of that ribbing only to find that I've made it like it's grown too much. So yes, that is like the only bit of like thinking brain power that I'll need for this jumper between now and finishing it. Um, but yes, really keen to, I feel like I've been working on this for ages. I haven't, it just feels like that and I'm getting a little bit bored and I think probably that's a reflection of the fact that over like December I was making a lot of presents and so it was all small stuff and I was getting through it really quickly. And so as a result, I'm kind of used to things getting done quickly and I haven't had to like have the patience of a big project for a while. So, but <laughs> big project says me on five and a half mil needles on a crop to jumper. Anyway, that's um, getting sort of awkwardly big now in terms of like traveling with it and things which is fine because I can just do on socks. Better? Okay. Um, in an interest to not acquire too much yarn, um, the only sort of acquisition yarn-wise to show is in my newfound love for Iser. Iser. I have bought more of their silk mohair. It's so fluffy um it's great so i've bought six balls of this maybe seven I bought all that was left um at the shop in melbourne which sells it and it was definitely a like panic purchase because it was the end of end of the yarn um so it's this very light i say like a very light cream dirty cream color I would like to try and find a white um, to make an Ingrid sweater um, because obviously more petite knit is always the answer. Um, I'm still working on that. I've tried a few different ones, but I'm still trying to find something that's like rustic enough. I bought a, a super wash at first and it looks too clean. Like the stitches are too defined and I really want it to be a fuzzy jumper and, and for it to like for you to enjoy the texture of each section but still have it like 
not so like clearly textured and it'd be a bit more hazy. That's the plan anyway. So I've ordered one skein of this uh, wool alpaca blend. So which in like a white. So hopefully this will kind of, yeah, pull it a little bit more neutral cream and less like white. Um, but we'll see. Um, the other thing I wanted to show, my other acquisition, is some fabric. So I think if you're only here for knitting content, thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you. I'll see you next time. Um, but if you want to stick around for some beautiful fabric, just a minute. I'm going to a wedding in a few weeks and I very rashly was like, I should make a new dress. Um, and so I bought this fabric and I think I might spend my entire life trying to like capture on video the beautiful peachy fuzz drape of this fabric but oh my goodness it's so beautiful and so lovely and I'm not quite sure if it suits me I think I might be a bit too pink for it but it's too late I bought it anyway it's very it's like, it's really thin. I was worried it'd be too thick, but it's, um, it's lovely. I've got three meters. So I think I'm going to do probably like a, you know, fit and flare because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but it's like a, it's kind of like a, it's called Cupro, um, blend. I'll put the details and like link it for anyone who is in Australia who might be interested in purchasing it. But oh, it is so lovely. Um, so I'm going to do probably fit and flare. It's just a matter of working out what bodice I'm going to do. I really need to have better plans when I buy fabric because it's really high stakes in terms of like if you're going to buy enough. I paid for this the last time I made a dress for a wedding and was like, I think the scraps that I had or the leftover fabric that I had afterwards was like a very small amount um, and I do not learn and I just keep buying more but this is my top of my priority to do list um, for the next few weeks so hopefully in a future video if one does exist and I don't just end up making this a single talking into the ether type situation I can hopefully show some progress on that. But yeah, I think that's everything. That should be everything for now. But um, hopefully this went okay. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. Hopefully there was something that you found interesting in here. And um, if anyone has any suggestions or if you liked it or if you didn't like it, I am open to all suggestions. I'm open to all feedback. So please let me know. And um, yeah, maybe I'll see you again. Thanks. Bye.